Is it lined up? Yeah. Okay, good. All right, so from our warm up, after graphing all these by hand, you realize that the graph of three cosine theta is actually a circle. The circle has a radius of three halves. To find the area, just do pi r squared. Hey, look at that, it's 9 fourths pi. Yay! All right, good. Okay, today we are going to find the area of polar graphs. Uh, remind me when we're done with the lesson, I have a couple quick AP exam tidbits to teach you as well. All right? Okay, so area bounded by polar graphs. Speaking of AP exam, so before your first semester final, oh, you are so awesome. Thank you so much. Okay, it'll, it'll still help some people get started. <laughs> Because we hadn't done a lot of free response, like A, B, and then all of a sudden, throughout the week before, we did a million free response practice questions. I don't know if you remember that. So the main topics on the A, B exam free response, you're almost guaranteed a differential equation, often with a slope field, right? Position velocity acceleration, uh, area volume. Is this for A, B? Or for this is A, B. Okay. okay. Area volume. Um, some sort of a problem with a table that involves like Riemann sums, trapezoids, average value theorem kind of stuff. Um, oh, antiderivative word problem, right? The rate that people enter the amusement park is E of T, and the rate that people leave the amusement park is L of T, right? How many people are in the amusement park at 5 p.m.? That kind of thing, right? Okay, so anyway, um, all of those are pretty much guaranteed to be on the AB calculus exam. BC adds, from what I have seen, and I don't have vast experience with this, this is just from a cursory glance through a number of BC exams, the two main additional topics on free response for BC, in the area of volume, they'll tack on an arc length like as a part C kind of a thing, right? Uh, and then they'll do, they'll, for whole questions, one will certainly almost always be devoted to Taylor series. And then, Often, one is devoted to area within polar graphs. All right, so what we're learning today and tomorrow is very possibly one of your six free response questions on this year's BC Calc exam, right? So that means it is one twelfth of your entire exam score. That's a big deal. So let's learn it and learn it well. Here we go. Okay. Oh, yes? On the BC exam, are you given any formulas? Nope. Why, why not? Now, I will tell you, if you have to do like a related rate that involves something like volume of a cone, they'll usually give you geometric volume formulas like cone, cylinder, sphere okay. kind of stuff, right? Okay. All right. Of course, we know that the area of a sector of a circle is given by one half theta r squared. Of course. Okay, of course, that. right? Yeah. Now, sure. theta is the angle between the two boundaries of the sector. Do you know sector is like a pi piece, right? Okay, so if we want a sector of a circle, we take the angle times a half times the radius squared, we get the area of the sector. Now, if you check it, just to see, because um, I looked at this and I'm like, where's the pi? There's no pi, right? Well, that's because pi is part of that angle. So if we did a whole circle, right, then the angle would be 2 pi. And there's your pi r squared for the whole circle, right? Does that make sense? So the, that angle is the angle of the sector. Okay, start to end. Okay. Okay. Now, whenever we have learned how to compute area or volume, We've done it the same way every time. We break it into little pieces and add a million of them together, right? We have to find area under a curve. We break it into little rectangles and add all the rectangles together, right? So we need volume by revolution. We break it into cylinders, right? Add them all together. When we have to find area of a polar region, we break the region into pi pieces, 
into sectors and add them all together. Okay? So the area of a polar region is really just your area of a sector of a circle with that infinite sum from alpha to beta, where alpha and beta are the beginning and ending angles for the region. All right? So this is a formula you might want to write down. Area of a polar region is one half integral r squared d theta. The easiest part of setting up these problems is, well, the one half, right? Okay. But then the r squared, because polar graphs are already, the radius is given. That's what the graph is, right? It's r equals, you know, 3 sine theta, r equals, right, whatever. So that radius is that radius. So you're going to just take your r, there's your r, right? So this, the integrand part of the integral piece of cake. The difficult part of the integral is finding the, the beginning and ending angles. Alright, so that's the part that some are easy, some are not quite as easy. Some are downright frustrating. And that's what we're going to work on today. Let's go back, actually, I want you to take a second. And we're going to go back and work on the warm-up. So we're going to find the area bounded by the graph of r equals 3 cosine theta. So we just graphed that. It was a circle, right? So because the graph begins and ends with an r of 0, we are going to find the angles, the limiting values of our integral, by setting the radius equal to 0 and getting a starting and ending position. I want you guys to take a second, set r equal to 0, and get some angles. See what happens. Let's get some angles. It is. It's very warm in here. I think it's that one. It's general. Today is a day to put all the phones away, close all those laptops. Gosh. And guys. What the heck? Okay. And guys, there's going to be some grunt work today. I want us to push through that grunt work. It's no. Okay. Well. It's been over a month since we focused on integrals by hand, right? We did all that sequence and series stuff. There were almost no integrals. In there. So tonight and tomorrow, you're going to be doing a lot of integrals. I want you to do them by hand. Because, well, unless it specifically says, like, use a calculator, in which case use the calculator, because it's probably not an easy one to do by hand. But otherwise, really get that practice in, because we are out of practice. And we need to get focused on grunting through. Right? Grunting through. Yes. Yes. Builds our pathways. Grows our brains. All right. So, tell me what angles you got. Pi halves, three pi halves. Pi halves, three pi halves. Any others? Is that it? Five pi halves. Seven pi halves. What about negative pi halves, right? What about infinity plus one? Okay, all those pi halves work, right? So here's the trap, trap number one of many, uh, is we can use any of those pi halves angles to begin and end our integral. But the problem is, say I go from negative pi halves to 7 pi halves, if, if I will actually have computed the area multiple times, right? So you need to make sure that when you are choosing your limits, you don't overlap the region twice. You know what I'm saying? Like you just want it to draw itself once, begin and stop. It doesn't matter which pair you pick, right? For the circle, it's just going to keep going. 
So I could go negative pi halves to pi halves. I could go pi halves to three pi halves. I could go seven pi halves to nine pi halves, right? Oh. Okay, it doesn't matter as long as it starts, draws the circle, and stops. Okay? So, I want everyone then to... Da, 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 so there's all our pi halves. Uh, okay, so as long as we pick consecutive values. So I want you to take a second, use that area formula you just wrote down, and see if you can write the integral setup for the area of this circle using any appropriate pair of angles. Once you've got that, I want you to see if you can solve the integral, evaluate the integral. It's going to bring back a small blast from the past. A blast? A brain blast there? Yes. Yes. Not the good kind or the painful kind? A uh, medium kind, yeah. Uh, Oh, right. Is it pi halves? Yes. Jimmy Neutron for the other one. Okay. Well, we're done a lot. What? Is it pi halves? Yeah. Don't go to the whole time. Oh, dark. No, it's a little dark. Dark, dark. We sort of pi We're not sketching the angles, oh, we're sketching the polar coordinates. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 This is not the circle R equals 5, right? This is its own little unique over here. Yes. Yep. Oh, if you have those, if you hate it, it's so they're related to what we're doing, and they're not like, oh, no. You have to pick the two x to each other. So you can do negative pi halves and pi halves. Because every single time it's zero, it's going to be the same. Tell me what you guys have to do. I was thinking that was R equals zero. Get a circle. Then get a cosine 2 over 2. Okay. All right. So I have at least one student who recognized what the blast is that I was talking about. Brain blast, Jimmy Neutron. One plus cosine of two. Ooh, okay, we're very close, right? So you encounter, when you're doing this, you encounter a cosine squared. When we have an integral of cosine squared, we have to use something with a big fancy name called a... Formula. Power... <laughs> Reduction identity, right? Yes. Okay. So let's write them down. You'll be using these a lot in the next couple days. So these would be good things to either know or at least have at your fingertips where you can refer to them. But you will have to know them eventually. Just two. Okay. So cosine squared is one half times one plus cosine 2 theta, and sine squared theta is 1 half times 1 minus cosine 2 theta. Oh, um, why is that? Uh, both of these are derived from the double angle identities for cosine, right? Remember how there's three double angle identities for cosine? Cosine 2 theta is cosine squared minus sine squared. Then you replace the cosine squared with a 1 minus sine squared, you get 1 minus 2 sine squared. You replace the sine squared with a 1 minus cosine squared, you get 2 cosine squared minus 1. Somebody give this lady a medal. So, no, you, you get that. You know the no, double that's like identity. Fancy, you know, right? That's that's like fancy. Doing all these so, so, anyway, so they're just arrived. These are just the double angle for cosine identities rearranged. Oh, right? Okay. So, it helps us because then we can go from a cosine squared or a sine squared down to a single power. I like to think, hey, cosine, it's still cosine, it's all positive, so we add, right? Sine, oh, change, it's bad, negative, right? So, anyway, um, yeah. So, change is bad. So, that's how I remember, add for cosine, subtract for sine. Oh, subtract for sine. Right? Okay, all right. So, anyway. Uh, <laughs> Combine for cosine, subtract for sine. Okay. okay. So anyway, uh, so let's apply your appropriate power reduction identity and solve. Have you guys already finished? Yeah. No. Okay. Take another minute. Finish.
Um, Finishing. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> These won't work because so they're not inside. <laughs> you gotta go yeah, like on to the next you. one. Oh, this oh, would actually create crack with some of the in your area. Dude, that, that's, that's so you messed up. Right. 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 You do realize that she's like, oh, why? Okay, so what I'm thinking yeah. is, like, right No. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Oh. That, that's actually not funny. Okay, you're not doing some physical that, that may be what your mom said, but there's a reason why she has to report it. And picking the angles, you're, you're, if you were to make a T-chart to graph this circle, could you do the graph by hand? Right. You have nothing on me. You have nothing on me. Yeah, yeah I'd be like a uh -huh, right, and well, yeah, yeah, okay. Why did you say such a thing? What did I say? What? Here, here. Okay. What did I do? So what happens is, if we start at high um, half, we kind of grab, right? And then it pies in here. And then if you kept going to three pi halves, it would take you back to here again. You literally are just one iteration from zero back to zero. Yeah. Well, good answer. Back to back, like I'm joining the same like, Does it always have to be like yeah, I got that. That's a good way to think of it. But you also have to take a graph into account. Whatever you say. The way that it gets graphed. Then you have to go to I'll show you. No. Okay. It's actually. 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 All right, so blah, 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 square the cosine, apply our power reduction, integrate, and we end up with da, 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 9 fourths pi, which we knew because we did this already, right? Okay, talk to me. Any questions with the integrating? So you can do any two consecutive data And they will work. All right, now I need to show you something else when it comes to the picture. When you look at this, this area of a sector kind of a thing, the beginning and ending angles are actually boundaries of the region, right? The beginning and ending angles do not have to be physical boundaries of the region. They're literally just the starting angle to get where the graph will start and the final angle to get where the graph will end. Because if you look at our warm-up, our picture, if we graph the line negative pi halves to pi halves, right, or three pi halves to five pi halves, or whatever you're doing, these aren't physical boundaries of our region that we're finding the area of. It's just the starting angle that kind of kicks you off to start the graph, and then the angle where you end. Do you understand what I'm saying? So it's not... These aren't boundaries. Like it's that's why area under a curve, right? It's so nice because it's there's your A, there's your B, they're boundaries, right? These don't work like that. They are it's a starting angle that gives you your initial value until you hit your final value, and then it's your ending angle to get your final value. Does that do you understand the difference? Okay. So when you're looking at your picture, the angle isn't always obvious. It's usually the way that I'm kind of getting comfortable with them is almost always it looks tangent to wherever you start and wherever you finish. So that's the kind of the what I'm gathering as I work through these problems. All right. Okay, I want you guys to try to see if you can do this start to finish. 
I want you to find the area of one petal of r equals 6 sine 2 theta. r equals 6 sine 2 theta. Um, if you want to take a second and graph it, that's fine. But I will tell you that roses, unless they've been shifted somehow, if you're adding or subtracting a number on the outside, if you have a rose, then it's going to be it's going to be centered at the pole, right? So it doesn't matter where the petals are, whether, you know, if it goes, if it's one of these, right? Or even if it's tilted like that, right, a diagonally kind of one or whatever. Either way, they're going to, any petal is going to start and end at the pole. So what would be a good way to find our angles? R equal to zero. R equal to zero, right? And then look for consecutive zeros. Because any two consecutive zeros will give you a pedal. Yes, So most of the time, it'll be consecutive zeros that we use? Most, I'm going to say 90% of the time. But once we get into what will be on, we're not up to the APD yet. So we're kind of leading up to it. So it's going to get harder. It's going to get harder, yes. I know, it's right. Grow that brain. Yeah. I don't have a brain. You know, what if, what if growing your brain hurts? It's worth the risk. It's you, worth it. You ever had brain surgery, Brian? Right? Yes. No. It's like, okay, regardless of brain surgery, it's like when you are getting ready to, you know, if we had to go run, like I'm not a runner, right? But say I wanted to go run a 10 mile thing. I'm not going to go out and run 10 miles, I would die. So, but, and so like maybe I start by running like two or three miles. Well, the first time I do it, it's gonna be hard, right? But the more I do it, it gets easier, <laughs> right? Right, it's the same thing with math. The first time you, you do something it's gonna be difficult, the more you do it, it gets easier. Build up that math brain muscle tolerance. Okay, there's my analogy for you. That's good. Do you have a problem with mathematics? So, would you do one minus four? Very good. Yeah, because you have to double. No, you're doubling, you're not times it by the No, Um, you don't. You just plug in the cell theta, you do two theta. So you get zero pi halves, pi, three pi halves, two pi halves. Oh, okay. So I, yeah. I get so, it. That right. Sense. So that's why your answer is getting goofy because you're not using consecutive. Yeah. I did zero to pi halves, but you could have done pi halves to pi, right? Okay, so I like to use zero whenever I can. I think zero is a nice, easy number. Okay. All right. So, how did you do with your setup? One half times r squared d theta. Right, 
in the square. So, oh no, we've got a sine squared. What do we have to use? That one formula. Power reduction identity, right? So we do our power reduction for sine. Remember, it's 1 minus cosine 2 theta, so you have to double this. You get 4 theta when you double. Alright, everyone comfortable? Will, tell me your question. You sure? Oh, no. Alright, okay. Alright, good. By the way, don't forget when you... When you anti-differentiate cosine 4 theta, you got to divide by the slope. I didn't need to show you, but well, I really did. Okay. So then you can plug in the pi house, and then you plug in the zero. Nine pi house? Yes? Okay. okay. Let's take it up a notch. See you, Catherine. Now, the next thing we're going to do is learn how to find area between two polar curves, all right? So in the past, we had that when we were doing regular old area. I don't know if you guys remember, but like, oh, there's this graph, and woo, there's that graph. What's the area of this space, right, kind of a thing? Okay. I'm shushing you again. Okay. Hi, guys. Okay. So we're going to have to do the same thing here, but with polar graphs. In order to do, to figure out where to begin and end, we have to know how to find points of intersection. I want you to take a second and see if you can find the points of intersection of these yeah. two graphs. By setting the R's equal to each other. By equating the radii. Yeah, equating the radii. Mm -hmm. Do we find omega? That circle thingy. Theta. 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 Yeah, you can just find theta. Technically, points of intersection are R thetas. Uh, and it's kind of nice to find the R just to make sure that they really work. You have the same radius, but you know, it's touchy. Well, if it says points, then yeah, you have to find R. For the next problem, you don't have to find R. But for this one, it's just points you really should find R. What did you get? How much did it be? Plus or minus zero to pi. Pi thirds, two over something, um, two over two pi over three. Cosine is one half and two pi over three. Pi over three. Oh, that's a plus. Cosine of one plus. Almost always high. It's too hot. Wait, cosine is cosine is not a plus. It would be negative. It would be sine two pi 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 how did you do on your points no, of intersection? Negative. Good. Good. All right. If we, I'm not going to make you actually graph. I'm yeah, just going to show graphs. No, because that's negative. Yeah, you're so, right. So, yeah. here's the graphs of the equation. Equations. This, that's pi thirds with a radius of 3 halves. This is 5 pi thirds with a radius of 3 halves. Are those all of our points of intersection, or does it look like there might be another? Well, you're probably going to be there's like another, nine pi over. but it didn't come out in our work. What? Wow. What? What's going on? Oh, it's not oh, differentiable. That's a tricky problem, right? Oh, it's a sh after I read it. Not differentiable. No, this has nothing to do with derivatives. Yes, it's all with derivatives. This is hard. This is a try. Everything has to do with it. No, no, it could can happen. It bounces. Um, it can, does have an okay. integral. Okay, let me ask you this. Different angle. Was that Cole that said that? That was Cole. Yes. Oh, you're pretty <laughs> smart. I think that was Will. That okay. was Will. I was not okay. even Cole. Uh, here's <laughs> the problem, and let's just walk through <laughs> this. You would have just applied it. On one of the graphs, this is no, the I point. Was looking, I was looking at the. 
0 pi. On the other graph, this is the point 0 pi halves. The problem with polar graphs is that you have multiple representation for the same physical point. So because of this, you can have tons of points of intersection and you will find none of them analytically because they're all actually different on the function even though they physically are in the same spot on the graph. So, so we have to connect to the medical world. So here's the, the thing about this, all right? Sphere world. There's only one completely accurate way to find all points of intersection. The only completely accurate way is to convert the equations from polar to rectangular. Then find all the points of intersection of the rectangular equations. Write all those points rectangular and then convert them all to polar coordinates. Right? Now, you will not be required to do this. Okay, so, well, polar graphs will last a graph all which they said we would be able to do rectangular. But anyway, okay. All the points of intersection will either be given, can be easily found analytically, or will be clearly obvious because you'll have a, they'll give you a graph, right? And then, you know, they'll probably just be labeled or whatever, right? But well, what if you can't see the graph? Because you're blind. <laughs> then you shouldn't be taking calculus. Okay. So anyway. That's, sorry, I find that evil is. Alright, that's enough. We don't need to go Braille into graphs. Graphs. Real graphs. Real graphs. Back, back it up. Alright. So anyway, just this is just something I want you to be aware of. So that you remember, there's more than one way to represent a point on a polar graph. So even though they share the same point, if you plug the point into the equations, you might not actually have the same polar representation of that point. All right, so here we go. I'm going to walk you through this example slowly. We're all going to do it together, all right? Then I'm going to set you loose on another one. Set you loose. Okay, so the question here says, find the overlapping area of r equals 2 and r equals 4 sine 2 theta, all right? The overlapping area if we were to graph the, the clover, the rose, with horizontal stripes, right? I'm just going to do one petal word. And then say we graph the circle with vertical stripes. The part where they, where they crisscross, right? That's the overlapping area. It's the area that they share. Okay? All right. So... Tell me, before we do any calculus at all, tell me one thing that we could do to just make our lives easier for this problem. Okay. Yes, Cole? Uh, find one of them and then multiply by four. Find one of them and multiply by four, right? Hey, look, I've got one of them graphed right here. Okay. How convenient. Now, um, symmetry is going to be your best friend with these graphing area equations. If you can split it into a bunch of symmetrical equal area regions and then just times it by that number, life is usually easier than trying to sit there and do all of them together, right? Okay, so yes, we're just going to find the area of one of these and then multiply it by four. Now here's the trick. It looks like if we just did, say we're just doing this space right here, it looks like if we just did the area of the sector of the circle from here to here, that would give us the overlapping area, right? No. Would that work? No. Because there are red lines there and it misses it. No. No. Because there are four. Yeah, of them. that's right. Yeah. You're, you're right. Yeah, because there's like, so if you look at it, then when the red lines cross, those are like, those would be the boundaries if you just find a point of intersection, but you're missing part of the blue graph. Okay. The problem is, if you just find the area of the sector of the circle, a sector of a circle has straight line boundaries. 
And what happens is, if we just find the area of the sector of the circle, we miss these <coughs> little sliver guys on each side of our little sector, right? Okay. So, what we actually have to do in order to find the total area is we do find the area of the sector, but then we have to add two slivers. Now, in order to add two slivers, we can make our lives easier by just finding the area of one sliver, doubling it, adding it to the sector, take the whole thing times four. Right? <laughs> wow. Okay. All right. Why did I take this? So, Oh, oh, don't look. I don't know, Dylan. You tell me. Right. Don't look, she says, like, three minutes after. Yeah, I know. I, I, hopefully I'm not on the rest. Okay, so the first thing I want you guys to do is figure out these points of intersection. So take a second and see if you can figure those out. And then we're going to have to talk about angles a little bit. Uh, I would just find them in the first quadrant because that's all we're working on right now. Integral that will give. 